good this is the book review show yes we are looking into another book a book that will take your breath away since may we started off with interesting riveting captivating books and tonight we have um an author here he is not new to the show his face is not new and he goes by the name kwabina ediman kata yeah i can see some people you know doing this yay he's back in the studio well uh he joined us about two years ago on the show but um his profile has you know jumped up small so let, let me let me read a bit about what he's been going um what has been going on in his life well he is an author and filmmaker who believes we are here to do for god what the moon does with sun with the sun's light that reflect his glory. He heads the Mankata Studios, an art company set to influence, challenge, and empower its audience by providing pertinent biblical solutions to life's issues through poetry, theater talks, and films. Kwabina also works in capacities as program director for Readers Trust, an NGO purpose to promote reading culture, and I have foundation an NGO that seeks to empower youth with pragmatic steps to act and implement their visions and co-founder of Mirror Africa, an NGO seeking to bring girls new perspectives to life. He fellowship with Pentecost International Worship Center, that's Saku Mono, where he is a deacon, a youth ministry executive, teen teacher, and serves on a few committees. We'll get to know more about Mankata, but um, KEM, Kwabina Edi Mankata, is my guest for today or tonight, and we are looking at his latest book, I Am Writing This For Us. Good evening, Mr. Mankata. Good evening, Caroline. How are you doing? It's been so long. Yeah, it's been it's been two years, like you mentioned, the first time I was, the sh I was on the show. And God has been good in the midst of this crazy COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, but God has been good. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. So what have you been up to since um, filmmaking has been um, on, on hold for now? Well, I've been, well, I've been indoors trying to write, you know, I'm trying to get more books out. And then also with Ghana YMC and the World Film, we have been organizing online film training and sessions for first time filmmakers. So that is what I've been busy with. Okay, okay, that's that's beautiful. Now, uh, Mankata has written so many books. Okay, I wouldn't say so many, but <laughs> quite a number of books. And the one we had him on the show with was It Had to Be God. And today we are looking at um, writing this for us. Um, well, I like the way he even started uh, the blurb behind the book. He says, Charlie, life will knock you down. It doesn't matter whether you are saved or not, rich or poor, amateur or professional, young or old, life will knock you down. But how do we stay on top? How do we not lose our minds? How do we remain in Christ? How do we deal with varying degrees of calamities and misfortunes? How do we not further aggravate the situation um, by taking shallow and wrong decisions? Well, this is what the book addresses. It's the book review show right here with me, Caroline Ousu Asama. And we are looking at, I am writing this for us, 50 inspirations when life does not add up. From it had to be God, from your special to I am writing this for us. Mr. Mankata, please, can you tell us a bit about the inspiration behind this book? Is it your soul experience or it's different people's experiences that you put together um, to bring out this book? Okay, well, my experiences are part. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one day I visited a friend in Kumasi okay. and when I got there, I met two other friends and we got talking. Whilst we were talking, there's one thing that I noticed that Whilst I was sharing my challenges with them in this Christian race, I realized that they have also been through similar challenges, but they had handled it better than I did. So it don't on me that though our call and our purpose may be different, the, the struggles are similar. And then if you know how somebody has handled a, a, a similar situation better, then you can learn from the person and then apply it when you find yourself in those same situations. So it's just my ex mostly my experiences and then 
some of my friends that I've had opportunity to learn from them. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's go straight into the book. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is when you gave a shout out. Okay. You said, shout out, dear Holy Spirit. I'm glad I listened to you. Eugenia Taikins, thanks for reading through this and offering fruitful inputs. And then it goes on and on and on. But you start with chapter one. Oh, you'll be tested. Or should I say, I, I don't know, is it is it chapters or how how do you break how do you break it down? Because it's sort well, of let's say chapters. Short. Let's say chapters. Chapters, okay, okay. So chapter one. Oh, you'll be tested. Your faith will be shaken and you see its roots glaring. You'd be knocked down, Charlie. Welcome to finding your two feet alone in God. Welcome to questioning your choices. Welcome to deep and generating ideas. Welcome to taking tough decisions. Welcome to life. It is time to put the declarations and resolutions into practice. Welcome to the start of you, the making of the dream you. Welcome, this seat has been occupied by many and they have moved on. You are going to survive this by hoping, believing, praying, and stretching. I know so. So what happened for this chapter one piece to come out? I think that often time in our Christian is, Charlie, you be tested though. You, you pray and then you, you, you ask God to lead you, to guide you, and to stretch you. You want to know uh, more of God. But I've learned in recent times that Sometimes if God wants to teach you humility, he doesn't just say, oh, my daughter, my son, be humble. He will bring situations your way. He will bring some form of, or allow some form of calamities your way. And through the calamities, you will learn to be humble. So I think that every now and then our faith is tested. And for me, Charlie, it happens over and over again. And I tell people that sometimes when I share um, a message on Facebook or even ha have the opportunity to preach, Whatever message that I preach, in the course of the week or sometime later, I get tested, I mean, on that particular subject to see whether what I shared, I'm going to live by them. So I think that everybody in this Christian race, your faith will be tested to actually see whether you are holding God true to his word, to see whether you are believing in him and you are trusting him all the way through. The beautiful thing is that Charlie, we are not the first. A lot of people have been through this. Pick Abraham, pick Moses. All of them have been through this. So we actually have the blue, the, 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 yes, the blueprint to actually go through life. So you're afraid to be tested, la. But that is when you actually uh, um, um, start living the real life that you have prayed to God to live. Because if you tell God that, I want to serve you, I want to, 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 to live my life for you, I want to do everything to bless your name, now there are, there are things that will be coming your way to see whether indeed you are actually going to do what you said. So that is life. It stretches our faith in a way that sometimes is unimaginable. Mm, 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 wow. That's interesting. Now, um, I want to know the language, uh, the language you used. It, it sounds like someone talking to his buddy. Why, why did you decide to um, use this kind of tone in, in the book? First, I wanted to make it um, a, a book that anybody can relate to. When you pick the book, you, you feel as if I'm seated in front of you and I'm talking to you or we are having some form of discussion. That is why I have Charlie. That will be you. It will be Keke. Or I'm writing this for you, lad. This is for you. So I wanted I wanted the book to be uh, one that is personal. You can personalize it, and then you read it, and you feel like this guy is speaking to me, <laughs> not any other person. So wow. that's why I decided to tell that particular line, and introduce our our uh, uh, foreign readers to our Ghanaian terms you know the way we we, we talk charlie and la, yeah. charlie, what they do and all that and and i should tell you that it's been the the that it's been the one thing that is actually drawing a lot of people to this book when they read it they come back with feedback charlie i like the way you're talking to me i just like the la and charlie and all that you wrote in there that's 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 authentic i mean it's it's bring some sort of um aura and uh, attention to the book okay let's go to our facebook and let's see what people are saying then we continue the discussion 
Okay, Nana Essi Budu. I don't think Nana Essi Budua Afo. I hope I got the name right. Has just sent a, a smiling emoji. <laughs> um, Yaya Adai says, Yay! Faith Hedziba says he is right. And Gwen Kujo, okay, Faith Hedziba says Gwen Kujo. I don't know, maybe she's tagging someone in there. Well, in case you just tuned in, is the book review show right here with me, Caroline Uso, somewhere tonight. We are looking at Kwabna Ebi Mankata's latest book. I am writing this for us, 50 inspirations. When life does not add up, sometimes life doesn't add up. And um, he's decided to write a book just for you watching tonight. So the discussion continues. But, but if you also want to send a text message, maybe your internet is quite poor, you can send it to 0231151615. That's 0231151615. Kabana Eddie Mankata is with me here. Okay, so now let's go to the next. It says chapter two it says because you are the leader, when the situation is overwhelming and everyone is breaking down all eyes would be on you. They'd want to know what's next. You aren't God, but you represent God at that very moment. And though you are breaking down, you have to find the courage to fling their hope. You have to find a word to hold it all together. Now, because you are the leader, God has already placed a word in you. Believe it. Open up for the Holy Spirit to dictate it to you. He'll also give you moves to share. Yep. Eddie Mankata, before you answer or before you explain this chapter, I want you to share your personal experience. Give me an experience. I don't want you to generalize this. I want you to give an experience where this particular chapter, you know, addresses that particular thing about leadership that you went through. You're a youth leader, you're a filmmaker, you must have a crew and you are the lead producer and director and all that. Tell us one experience um that you know relates to this that may be an allusion of this okay well i'm thinking i have quite a number of them so <laughs> <Just this one. laughs> the recent one will be one where when i was directing my latest short film and beyond the service at coforedia i remember when we got to set it started raining heavily it was raining and ev the crew everybody was looking at me that was the first, they were looking at the boss, what do we do? And I said, Are you, let, let's just hold on a minute. Just everybody sit in the car and then let's, 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 let's sit in the car for a minute and let's see whether this rain is going to stop. Now, eventually the rain stopped and then we were able to move to the location where we were supposed to shoot. When we got there, the location was a mess. They were cl uh, closed all over. Everything was a mess and we we're running behind schedule. And they all tend to look at me, what do we do? Time is, we are, we, are, we, are, we are behind schedule. We need to catch up with the rest. The budget is running. What do we do? And I told them to relax. So every, I got everybody seated and then I just passed behind <laughs> and then stood behind the building. I was like, God, I really don't know what to do right now. Whether to ask these people to stay whether to, for us to go and then come back early tomorrow, I'm confused, right? So I stayed there for a while and then it started raining again. And then somehow I felt in my spirit that, tell them to go, go. Tomorrow is another day, you can continue. So I went and I gathered them and I said, guys, let us go, we'll come and shoot tomorrow. And then everybody came, boss, you know, we, we, are, we are running with a schedule. If we are not able to cover today's shot, it will run into tomorrow and then to run into the next. I said, you know what, you just let us go. I'm trusting that tomorrow you're going to have a clear word that everything will be set and then we will go. But inwardly, I was breaking down. Inwardly, I knew that something is up. We have to get this thing done. But then we went and then everybody went to their room. I went to my room and I, I still was praying to God that, God, I need you to hold the weather tomorrow. Other than that, I don't know how we are going to go through this. But then the next day, the weather was clear and we're able to do even more than, than, than we're supposed to do in a particular day. So wow. I think that more than often, if you're leading a group, uh, now I'm being reminded of David when he and his men returned to Zikla. And, and yeah, the I was about to say the same. <laughs> raided the whole place, you see. Yeah. And they even wanted to stone David. Stone him, and yeah. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then Lord. he sought the face of the Lord and God said, pursue 
and you're going to overtake them and he okay. did and he won. So I think that we are all leaders in a way. And sometimes in the heat of the moment, when your followers are breaking down, that's when you need to stand on your feet and seek the face of God. And I believe, like I've written, that God will give you words. He will order your steps and you know what to do, La. Mm, you know what to do, La. Um, it's the book review show right here. We meet Caroline. Someone. We are looking at Eddie Mankata's book. I'm writing this for us. And as you were talking about your experience and sharing it, my cameraman, uh, Danny, was shaking his head. He was nodding because <laughs> he, he, he's been through that several times. So I know he can relate because you are writing this for him. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> he's laughing. <laughs> okay, so I'll jump to chapter 25. Um, and this is some of this one of the things in life where it's very hard to detect. And because of that, people haven't, you know, trusted or their trust for people has been broken. So it's very hard for them to trust again. It says, if only you had eyes to detect wolves in sheep clothing, if only you could discern the traps in some advice, if only you could feel the hate in hugs, if only you could understand the schemes behind some smiles. Wait, there's a way. Take everything high in prayer, very high. Then watch how things unfold. There is a fine perspective at that level. Jai. Mankata. <laughs> oh, Drew, there's a fine perspective at that level. Jai. Jai. I think that often time, Mm. One day I was telling someone that we are living in a time where our enemies do not boldly declare who they are in front of us. Mm. It's not in the olden days where Moses, Joshua, David, they will see their enemies guarded and their enemies will make their intention know that I am coming to fight you people like Goliath, I'm coming to kill you people. And then, and then you see and you are frightened and then you call upon the name of the Lord and he gives you an idea or something to do. In, in recent times, we don't see our enemy. They don't present themselves like that. It could be somebody close to you. It could be somebody that, um, like somebody like somebody close or a relative who is scheming against you unknowingly. And, and I say that there is a way because I know that when you carry it high in prayer, sometimes when you take it high in prayer, you get a fine perspective. You get a nudge and a prompting. Something tells you in here that you need to watch this person. That, and sometimes God uses situations. Sometimes you are seated and then you hear a sermon. And in the sermon, there is a particular message that you know this is directed towards this guy that I'm running this business with. I don't know how God does it, but I've had it over and over again in my life where through a particular situation, God unmarks people whom I thought were friends but were enemies or through a particular sermon or a quiet time, God actually makes you understand through an illustration that this guy, this person is not your friend and you need to step away from them. So it, it, it's not um, it's not really an issue, an issue like you have to go high, high and pray <laughs> and then see God's face and direction and commit everything to him and he will help you descend who is right, who is not right, who is with you, and who is not with you. Mm. Okay, so so um, Mr. Mankata, aside or apart from prayer, uh, is there a way you can tell if someone is a wolf in sheep clothing? I mean, of course, there are wolves in sheep clothing, and it's not so easy to, to tell that they, they are maybe a wolf, but are there some signs uh, with your few years on earth and in ministry? Are there some signs that you've been able to, or God has revealed to you that, hey, um, these are, you know, the red flags and knowing that this person is indeed a wolf, but he's coming as a sheep. Well, where I said the prayer, like I mentioned, they are, God speak to us, Caroline, in many ways, like I mentioned yeah. earlier, through sermons. Sometimes I could be talking to you and something that you said or something that you say in a conversation unknowingly is even an answer to a prayer that I've said. Yeah. So it is up to us to open up our spirit to listen to God. I remember one time I was seated in a, in a public transport. And before, before I sat in the transport, there's, there was something I was actually believing God for. And I've been praying, that, seeking his face. I was getting no answer. And then this man enters the trotter. The man is holding um, books 
And these books are science books. They have nothing to do with, with, with sermon or anything. And then he sit, he stand in the church and all he says is that, you want something from God. To hope no more three days. And the man just said that, and then he just went on to sell his science books. I'm like, okay, no, this can be this can be him talking. This is God actually speaking to me to actually wait on him for three days for whatever I was believing him for. So you have to open up your spirit, open up your 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 spirit to see, to hear, to listen all over. And sometimes these people, sometimes by what they even say. But what they suggest, if you are open up, you know that this is not from God. This We can't do this. Sometimes they give advice that make, make it look like this is okay, this is good. But when you look at that advice in the light of scripture, you realize that, no, this is not good. This is not right. But I think more has to do with prayer and open up your spirit to listen to God. Because I know that the God you and I serve, he loves us so much that he doesn't want anything bad or evil to happen yeah. on, to us. So he will make a way for us to know what is actually happening in our lives. Indeed. Now, now that even um, reminds me, uh, let me share a story. Um, I had okay. a friend, you know, who, uh, should I say, one, his <laughs> I don't, closer friend, you know, proposed to a lady he was interested in. Okay. So when he made known to his friend that, oh, this is the lady that I want. Then his friend said, oh, no, you don't have to go for this lady. The two of you, you don't click. Uh, meanwhile, you know, he, he had gone behind him to earlier propose to the girl and the girl refused. So if his friend had listened to him, right now they are married and their lives are, I mean, glory to God, it's, it's looking fabulous. But, you know, that uh, intention or that advice came out of his own selfish interest because he had done something behind the friend's back and you know he didn't listen to him and he, he, he that's why he gave that advice so i mean charlie it's, it's it's good that you you go to the lord in prayer because for this you wouldn't see because if your best friend should tell you that hey this girl charlie she's not the right girl for you it would take some divine intervention for you to see that no this person is lying and this person was a pastor. So can you imagine? Mankata. <laughs> we are right. Yeah. 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 That's that's true. Okay, so let's let's take some um Facebook messages. Um Dokas Fafali Che. I hope I got it correct. He said he's a deacon. Um she again says original book addict. Yeah, Bohema says Moses' faith. I think she was referring to the leadership. And then she comes again and says, my all-time favorite author. Loved, loved, loved this book. Hey, so me now I'm late. Some people have already read the book. Uh, I see. Anyway, let's 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 go and see if we still have some more comments here. Okay. All right. So that's that with the comments. All right. So let's shift our attention a bit from the book to you, Mankata. Um, oh. Let's look at the Ghanaian book industry. You are an author. You've authored about, I don't know, is it six or seven? Please correct me if I'm six. wrong. Six. six. Yes, yeah. six books. Um, how have you come this far? And what are some of the things you've done to make sure that your book um, is in the limelight? Because I've had authors come and maybe this show has helped them to an extent, but, you know, from there, they don't know how to let their book, you know, have a lasting legacy. What, what, what advice do you have for some of these authors or upcoming authors watching you tonight? Well, I think that the first thing I would say is visibility. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you show up you show up in people's faces, you show up at people's events, and you don't show up empty-handed. I think that, that, yes, you don't show up empty-handed by me. Okay, you show up to support them. You also show up with your books. So visibly carry your book everywhere that you go and, mm -hmm. and, and talk to people about it. And then you have to, you are your personal marketer of your book. So every now and then you have to learn to share from your book. You have to let people also give you reviews and feedback, and they also share from the book on their uh, social media pages. 
and all that. So visibility is very key. That's the first thing. You have to make sure that you are visible. Your books are visible. It is in people's faces. It is at people's events. It is practically everywhere. So one of the things I'm, I'm learning to do is that once I get a book published, I have friends all over the region, like all over the, the, the country. So sometimes I send them books, somebody in Kumasi, somebody in Sunyane to make noise about it. When somebody asks for the book, I can say, okay, check with this guy in KNUST, check with somebody in Dansman or Medina or Ayaifa, like spread and don't remain at a particular place. If you do that, nobody will get to know of your works. The other thing that I, I try to do it's because I'm writing to a specific audience. It's, it's basically Christian literature. Sometimes I, I take the books to churches, and there are some pastors that are kind to take copies. Some of them will read it and give you feedback. Some of them will call you back and ask you to bring copies to sell to their members. Some of them won't call you back. But <laughs> nevertheless, you have to go out there and then give it to them. They are student leaders, student spiritual leaders president of campus, um, churches, and all that, speak to them, take books there, let them um, read, and then let them give you the opportunity to come and then talk to the, 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 the audience or maybe the, the members about it. And there are lots of activities that are ongoing. You have a lot of um, events. Now, because of COVID, there are no events, but you can have praise festivals ongoing, uh, some women, something meeting somewhere, yeah. um, guys meeting somewhere, show up call the RSVP number and tell them, see, I have this book and then I want to come and mount a stand. Some of them will agree. Some of them will disagree. And maybe you bargain with them. Look, probably if I come and mount a stand and then I sell the books, I give 10% of the proceeds to, to support the program that you are running. You have to be up and doing because the yeah. books won't sell themselves. And it's a challenge. <laughs> because, yeah, it's a challenge because especially... I, I say that mostly in this country, the, the authors that sell a number of books are already popular. So you have a pastor who is already popular. And so when they put out a book, it's out there. Yeah. You have yeah. a celebrity or somebody, they're already popular. So the book just go. But for some of us who are trying to build a brand, you have to work hard. You have to be conscious of the content you put out there, the cover design, all those things go into it to ensure that yeah. there are people, I could say, my first book, it has to be God. There are people who bought the book. They had no idea who I was. They just picked the book and they said, ah, I like this book. I like how you feel. I like how small it is, how much. <laughs> and then they bought it. But you have to be visible. Show up. Show up with your book. Show up to support other authors. And then push. Or else, you know, go be you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear him. I hear him. Uh, okay, let's, let's look at some more Facebook comments. Leticia Opong says, loved, love, love this book. Okay, I think I have read that. Um, Yabo Aima says, I am writing this for us. And Eddie Nine, Eddie Nine says, wow, I am enjoying this. Okay, Faith Hebzeba, I see you. Papa Siasama, I see you. Anita Oansa, I see you. Sarah Else, I see you, I see you all, I see you, I see you all. So um, as Mankata has said, if you're an author, um, who wants to also promote your book come into the limelight this is the show for you so yeah right after the show don't wait for one minute cry in mankata's words call 0231 and then let's get talking if you are a business to a bookstore a bookshop and um, or a stationery shop you want to promote your business this is the platform for you because authors parents, everyone is watching the book review show and we are the only book review show um, in Ghana. We are the number one and we are the best. So I am writing this for us. Um, it's a review, so you have to go and get the book yourself. But we'll, we'll look at the 50th point and then Mankata will tell us how much the book goes for and whether he's launched it or not. Okay, so let me read um, chapter 50. It says, okay, we are ending. Dear God, let your love engulf this person, the one reading this. No situation or condition is superior to your word. So hold the hand of this one through this face. Let your peace rule over this heart and fill it with divine joy. Give a word and bless it into fruition. I bless you for answered prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Mankata. 
Okay, so before I I I I talk about the price of the book and all that, I just want to say add that Charlie, life will knock you down. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. And I don't know, maybe listening to me right now, you're going through some situation and you don't understand. I know. You are not, you are not alone. Sometimes cry. I said, you'll be looking for coins in your trousers, in your wardrobe, Charlie, but you don't go find. The truth is that there are ways to, to, to come out of these situations. That's why this book is there. And I said, like Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crashed. So we are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, not destroyed. We carry in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus will also be revealed in us. So this book contains biblical inspirations to help you when you find yourself in a situation that does not end up. Well, a copy of the book is 15 Ghana CDs. One five. Yes, I already... Can I say something? Yes, I've already launched the book. Okay. So if you want to get copies, you have numbers on your screen that you can call. Yeah. And then irrespective of your location, we'll find a way of getting you a copy of the book. Okay. All right. So uh, you are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Can you give us your handle? So or... Facebook, Babina. Eddie Mankata, or oh, my page is Kwabina E Mankata. On Instagram, at K Mankata. On Twitter, at K Mankata. And also on YouTube, is Kwabina Mankata. Okay. Um, I realize you, you said Mankata. Is that the pronunciation? That means I've been pronouncing it wrong all this while. I've been saying Mankata. <laughs> you know, there is no H. There's no age at the end of the name. So you just so Mankata. Ma Mankata. But you, you said Mankata. Oh, that's me. Oh. That's Miss Lai. Oh, that's hey. me. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, let's pick some more messages and then we wrap up. All right. Um, um, yeah, Bahima says, oh, love. She sent a love emoji, meaning she loves this. Dorcas Fafali Che says, six books is a lot. <laughs> what inspires you to write? Uh, Bernard Arthur Darlington says, I see you too. Mamea Kosio Furiwa Densi says, my all-time favorite. La. Dorcas Fafali said, the lano. <laughs> Mamea Kosio Furiwa Densi said, it's a love movement. <laughs> this week, <laughs> my audience is getting me laughing this, this evening. Yeah, Bahima says, 15 Ghana City Spella. <laughs> And then Dokas Fafali comes again and says, 15 Ghana cities la. Imano Ewuku says, absolutely. And Nerna Esi Budua Afo says, and in a circle represented la. Uh, Charles Ophoria, who said, Mankata. Okay. All right. So um, amazing how time flies. I've really enjoyed uh, myself. Anytime Mr. Mankata comes to the studios, he just makes sure that we get he gets everybody laughing and I can't wait uh, for his comedy um, drama. Mr. Mangata, when, I, when is your um, drama comedy coming up? Well, the La <laughs> yeah, the La Well, we are monitoring the COVID situation and okay. I'm trusting that before the end of the year, we'll have a La Movement drama. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, so uh, amazing how time flies. But before you go, your final words to um, the viewers out there. Well, my final words will be that there is nothing new under the sun. And the, the man we follow, Jesus that we follow, he has answers. And sometimes they are not packaged in the way that we are expecting. But when we diligently follow him and seek his face and direction, he's going to take us through every situation. He has promised that he will always be with us. So it's not as if uh, one day I told somebody that if you are crying, it means that God is also by yourself crying. And he, he feels what you are going through. So let us diligently seek Jesus in everything that we do. And let us have him translated in everything that we also do. So I've written this book for us. And I'm trusting that when you get a copy and you read it, God is going to order your steps as you follow him diligently. Thank you, La. <laughs> 
Okay, let me read some last comments before we go. Dokas Fafali comes again and says we will be representing. Uh, and Imanol Ewuku says the 15th self he for double. <laughs> the book is more than gold. Oh, you can give double you are. <laughs> Imanol Ewuku, yeah. And um, Dokas Fafali says Mr. Mankatala, the La Movement drama. <laughs> anyway, this whole time will allow us uh, for tonight. We just looked at Edward Mankata's latest book. I am writing this for us, 50 Inspirations, One Life Does Not Add Up. And it's a special book. It's not the normal motivational book where it says, um, yes, you can carry 50 buckets and blah, 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 blah. The cliche, you know, this is a different one and you have to get it. It's 15 Ghana CDs only. Uh, Mr. Mankata, please, can you give the phone number that people can call if they want this book delivered to them. Yeah, it is on your screen right now. Okay. All right, all right. That's 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 wonderful. Okay. Or you can call 0231 151615 anytime you want more details about the book. Mr. Mankata, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for coming on the book review show right here. Thank you too. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful. Lah. Okay, <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot, this thing is a lot of movement. Well, it's been the yeah. book review show brought to you by GCOM Multimedia. Uh, we've looked at, I'm writing this for us by Eddie Mankata. Well, next week we are celebrating Father's Day and we are going to have an interesting discussion. We are going to have some fathers um, representing live. We're going to look at the 21st century father and its successes and challenges. We'll be having grand, a grandfather, we'll have a father. Yeah, we'll have different, different kinds of fathers in the studio, my own studio, <laughs> my Zoom studio. So yeah, it's been a book review show right here with me, Caroline Obiswa Samwa, and it's been an awesome time. Please stay safe, watch yourself, wash your hands, wear your nose mask whenever you're going out, and please observe social distancing. Yeah, it's brought to you by GCOM Multimedia. It's the book review show. My name is Caroline Ousu Asama. I am signing out. But yeah, um, shout outs to Editors GH. This program is also brought to you by Editors GH. Just go to Facebook, Instagram, Editors GH for your CV, for your project work. I mean, any kind of editing services that you need, trust them and they will be at your service. So I have to go before I keep talking and talking and talking and talking. Thanks. It's bye-bye for me, Caroline, who's someone signing out from the book review show. Bye.